Hello and welcome to Algebra 2, Chapter 1.3, and today we're going to talk about solving linear equations. So that you know our goals for this section, we're going to talk about solving linear equations, and we're also going to do a few word problems, which means we're going to use them to solve real life situations. Few definitions in case you need a little review here. Uh, remember, an equation is a statement setting two expressions equal to each other, and so equations will always have an equal sign because we've got that equal to each other. We're going to start with linear equations, and linear equations uh, have degree one. If you remember what degree is, which means we're just going to have an x to the first power. There's no exponents in it. There's no variables in the denominators. When we graph linear equations, they always graph a straight line. Uh, we are going to look for the solution to our linear equations, and the solution is the replacement for the variable that results in a true statement. Remember, true statement is something like 2 equals 2. Uh, 2 equals 3 is a false statement. And equivalent equations are two equations with the same solution, so two equations that both equal 3, for example. A review of what you can do to an equation. Remember that we can add the same number to both sides. That's our addition property. Subtraction property says we can subtract the same number from both sides. Multiplication property, you're going to multiply both sides by the same number. Keep in mind that does say sides. So we have to multiply the whole entire side by the number. And division property says we can divide each side again by the same number. So you got to make sure when you multiply and divide, you do that to the entire side. All right, a few examples to look at. Uh, the, so the idea behind solving an equation is you want to get the variable by itself. So you're always working towards getting the variable on one side all by itself. So this first one, I got x already on one side, so I want to clear everything away from x. So subtract 8 from both sides, you get 2 ninths x equals 8. And then the fastest way to get rid of that 2 ninths is to multiply by 9 halves, the reciprocal. Because when you multiply a number times its reciprocal, everything reduces to 1's, and you get 1x equals and if we look here, we're going to reduce before we multiply. That's a whole lot easier than uh, reducing later. So it looks like we get 36. Remember, the great thing about equations is you can check every answer. So I highly suggest you put x back in and you check it. The next example, we have uh, an n on both sides. And so you want your n's to be on the same side. So let's start with that. I always suggest you move your n's first, or your x's, or whatever variable you're looking at. So we get 8n minus 3 equals 21. And yes, you can combine steps if that makes sense to you. Uh, so let's add 3. We get 8n equals 24. So we have everything on the other side except that 8. Divide by 8, n equals 3. Remember, we're kind of undoing our order of operations backwards. So we undid the addition and subtraction first, and then we undid the multiplication and division. All right, our last one here on this slide, we're going to want to distribute first. So let's do 5x minus 10 equals. Make sure you're distributing a negative 4. So we get negative 8x minus 28 plus 8 then I would suggest you always combine like terms. I'm going to write it out. It's that important. Combine like terms. Always, always. So we get 5x minus 10 equals negative 7x minus 28. Okay, all I did was combine the x's there. They're on the same side, so you don't like add it over. What You just combine them with the signs they have. We want to get our x's on the same side, so I'm going to add 7x to the other side so that I have a positive x. So we get 12x minus 10 equals negative 28. If we add 10 to both sides, it looks like we have 12x equals negative 18. Divide by 12. I want you to leave it as a fraction, but we need to reduce it. It's negative, let's see here, 
2 goes into both, we get 9 halves. Looks like negative 9 halves. All right, we're just going to do one more example today. Um, so this one that starts with 2 thirds here. Don't let the fractions get you, get you messed up from the beginning. My suggestion, you multiply the entire equation by the least common denominator. Okay, so if we were going to make common denominators, I think we would make everything be 30. So I'm going to multiply by 30. I'm going to distribute that to all the terms. And I'm going to write out this step here. We get 30 times 2 thirds x plus 30 times 1 fifth equals 30 times 2x minus 30 times 3 tenths. And look what happens. Remember I said before we always want to reduce before we multiply fractions. Cross those out. 1, 10, there's 20x. So no denominator. Uh, let's see here. That reduces 5 goes into both. 1, 6, so there's a 6 equals 60x minus 1, 3, that's going to multiply to make 9. All right, let's move our x's on the same side. So notice we have no more denominators, which makes the problem so much easier. Right? That's the part of the problem we don't like is the denominators. So it looks like 15 equals 40x. And if we divide both sides by 40, it's an x. 15 over 40 which would be 3 eighths. I want you to leave it 3 eighths. All right, that's all I want you to do for your homework. Feel free if you want to try these other three problems and see if you can do them. We're going to go over them in class anyway, and we'll do those word problems. Have a great day.